John 14, 1. We're talking about intentionality or intentional series. In the next few minutes, I want to talk about intentional thinking. I want to talk about intentional thinking that leads to peace. Intentional thinking that leads to peace. I want to talk about that. And please don't go to the place whenever something like that is announced. Oh, I know all about that. Don't go to that place. That's a spirit of pride. That's a lack of humility. And you don't get fresh grace whenever we're in that place like we know it all. I don't know it all. I said at the funeral last week to a lot of people that, well, pretty much everybody I didn't know except for a couple of people uh, in Stafford Springs last week, I stood up and I gave what God wanted me to give. And, and one of the first things I said is, guys, you all know that I'm a pastor, but I don't know everything in the Bible that there is to know. I want to know everything, but I don't know. And so I'm just going to give you what I think the Lord wants you to know today. Whether you know it already or you don't, I'm here to just encourage you and, and give you what is on my heart. And so here's what's on my heart this morning. Intentional thinking. Say intentional thinking. You're only a victim if you decide to be a victim. We all have been victimized. We all have been hurt. We've all been mistreated. That I'm just giving you different words for uh, being victimized, but we don't have to take on a victim spirit. That, that's something that we can say, no, this is, this is the world. Jesus said we're going to have a lot of challenges, and part of it is mistreatment and victimized and all that stuff, but we don't have to take on a victim spirit because the victor spirit's inside of us if Jesus is inside of us. So we can say, no, we don't have to wear that gar garment. Um, and so uh, we have a choice, say choice, we really do, of what we think. But you have more of a choice, say more of a choice, if you know more of what God has said or is saying, and that's the benefit of having oneness with God and pursuing Holy Spirit, what are you saying? 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 Because he's going to download something that the Bible calls higher thoughts so that you can live above instead of below. See, there's lower thoughts and there's higher thoughts. When you feel like you're down here, it's probably because you're being influenced by lower thoughts. But if you feel like you're up here, you're being influenced by what the Holy Spirit says because he's going to say something higher, which is designed to bring you higher. It's not just a slogan where God says his thoughts are higher. It's literally thoughts that bring you higher. Are you with me? And so I, I personally, I want to be higher. I, I want to be above the clouds in the jet stream. I don't want to be below the clouds. And I think that's all, I think that's a, a desire for all, all of you, otherwise you wouldn't be here. So I have good news for you today. We're talking about intentional thinking that produces peace. Say, that produces peace. Okay. You don't have, this is so good, you don't have to wait for something on the outside to determine your inside. A victim spirit says, I have to wait for things to be okay around me. I have to wait for my body to be healthy. I have to wait for this. I have to wait to have peace. That is a lie. That is not true. You can have peace from your direct connection with Jesus. Let me share some scriptures. John 14. Thank you, Maya. Verse 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't. Let your heart be troubled. What is that saying? It's saying what I just said in paraphrase. It's saying in scripture. I can choose whether my heart is troubled or not troubled. I get to choose. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Doing really good. Trust in God and trust also in me. Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Don't let your hearts be troubled. This is what Jesus, this, this is the voice of Jesus. Say Jesus. He's saying, don't let your hearts be troubled, but then he's saying how to keep it from being troubled. 
I, did you get that? Trust in God the Father and Jesus, and you will keep your heart from being troubled. So whenever your heart is troubled or you're anxious or you're fretting, it's just because you have left the life lane of trusting God and trusting Jesus, and you're, you're in another lane. So let's just make it practical and real and turn the steering wheel and get back into the life lane. Are you with me? How do you do that? One of the ways you do it is say, Holy Spirit, is first of all, humbling yourself. I'm troubled. I get to choose if I'm troubled. Circumstances don't determine whether I'm troubled. My thinking determines whether I'm troubled or not. So I must be thinking something opposite of the higher thoughts. So let's talk to the author for, that provides the higher thoughts for the higher thoughts. And that will get us out of that lane that's a troubled lane over to the life lane. Is everybody connecting? Is this, this is good? Okay. See, denying that you're not troubled, that's just the spirit of stupid. No, denial and avoiding that you're anxious or fretful or even going to the place of, well, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be. That's condemnation. That's not the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is saying is not you shouldn't be, is that you don't have to be. I've got another way for you. I've got good news for you. That's why it's called the good news of Jesus Christ because everything he has to say leads to more of his goodness. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. That's just a great thought, isn't it? Always with Jesus. This is only temporary. Just one, just one revelation from the Holy Spirit can take you, boom, out of a troubled heart, peace and power. This is only temporary. Let's go from the littlest to the big. Come on. Let's deal with life. They ran out of carpet squares. That's little, right? I get to choice. Do I focus on what was done or do I focus on what wasn't done? Do I focus on look at what God did do or look at what God didn't do that I wanted done when I wanted it done? That determines whether I'm troubled or I have peace. Okay, that's little. All right, you go to the doctor and let's go for the big one. Let's go for the big C. By the way, the big G is, is bigger than the big C. Okay, Let, you know, let's, let's just deal with what we need to deal with. Whatever it is, whatever fear it is, your kids, uh, COVID, whatever it is, let's just deal with it and say, no, you cannot have my heart. I determine whether I'm troubled or, un, or not troubled. I've got power over you, voice, that's trying to trouble my heart, and you can't come in here. Come on, everybody, let's value our hearts like women with pocketbooks. Huh, nice juicy red one. Even matches her sweater. That looks good. No, come on. Come on, let's put it into practical things. Because most of us were not mentored that the main deal and the most valuable thing that you've ever been given is right here. You, you, not your clothes, not your pocketbooks, not your money. That right here, you're you, 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 you are more valuable than any of that stuff. So stand up and say, no, you can't have my heart. I'm not going to live troubled. I'm not going to live anxious. I'm not going to be fretful. And then tell them why after I give you a few more scriptures. So here's, let's, let's, before I go into that, this is a conversation between Jesus, say Jesus, and one of his disciples, Philip, at that time. He says, uh, oh, excuse me. No, we won't, this is Thomas. No, we don't know, Lord, 
Thomas said, we have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I don't know about you, but I just love that. I, I just love that statement. I am the way. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Oh, just soak on that. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. Did you hear that? If you'd really known me. See, you can know about Jesus. You can know about God. But do you know him? God wants to take us out of here, all of us, continually upgrade us, me included, out of knowing to knowing. Mm, I just want to hug Jesus. <laughs> From now on, you do know him, and I have seen him. Philip said, Lord, and we got a conversation with a few disciples. There's a my Philip. Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, kind of sounds like us. Kind of put yourself into conversations here. This is so cool. Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father. The whole point of this, of me saying this, has nothing to do with what they're talking about. I'm just, I'm just reading a conversation with Jesus and some of his people because you're some of his people. And you can, and, and it's so cool that Jesus keeps working with them. He doesn't slap them and say, stupid, why don't you get it? He does say sometimes, oh, you of unbelief or little faith. But look at how Jesus is working with them, trying to help them get the revelation. That's serious graciousness right there. That alone could produce peace in your heart. That knowing God's nature, and Jesus is, is a representative of the Father, and they're both the same. Knowing the nature of God, just the nature of God. He's the God of love. He's the God of hope. He's the God of life. He's the author of wisdom. He's gracious. He's compassionate. That alone, meditating on that, could produce peace in any storm that you're in. He's faithful. He, he'll never forsake me. He never has, and he never will. Those are peace-producing higher thoughts that God wants you to have. That's the intentional thinking that he wants you to pursue when you feel your peace gauge going down. Just recognize, just humble yourself. Like I said before, avoidance and denial doesn't work. Just recognize that, that it's, it's starting to be chaos. It's starting to be a mess in here. And, 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 and go to the cupboard. Just like you would if you were hungry. Go to the refrigerator. The Holy Spirit will provide something for you to up your, upgrade your peace. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving... Present your request to God. Then you will experience God's peace. God's what? God's what? If we don't have peace, there is a storehouse of it waiting for you. And it's in his presence. It's in his word. It's in his voice. He wants to influence you with peace when you don't have it. Which exceeds everything we can understand. It's not only peace, but it exceeds what we can understand. In other words, you're controlled more by his spirit than what you, what's around you. His peace, excuse me, his peace regard your hearts and minds. Guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I think that's a typo. 2 Corinthians 1.3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion. Say, Father of compassion. Say, Father of compassion. Say, Father of compassion. Say, God Almighty is compassionate. Do you like being around a compassionate person? Someone, when you're having a hard time, they have compassion. That's God. And it comes from Him. And the God of all comfort, say all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. Bam, there it is. If your heart is troubled about anything, there's a God that will comfort you in any trouble that you're experiencing. All, say all. 
all troubles. Comfort is available for any and all trouble. Through Jesus, through our faith in him, the Father will provide it. Mark 5, 35, 36. While Jesus was still speaking to the woman who just got healed from the issue of blood, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. They told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use struggling. Uh, Don't trust voice texting. I love typing with my voice, except when it throws you a curveball and you didn't see it coming. Duh, there's no use troubling the teacher. Thank you, teacher. The teacher now. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. What causes our heart to be troubled? It's fear, right? All of you are right. It's fear. The Spirit of God really wants to help you overcome the spirit of fear. And the way He wants to do it is to put fresh faith inside of you concerning His nature, His promises, His wisdom, who He is, what His higher thoughts are. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus overheard them and said, Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith. I'm going to say something that's not Scripture. Unbelief makes you vulnerable to the spirit of fear. So the Lord wants to fortify you with faith in his nature and his promises and his wisdom so you can live in peace no matter the circumstances. So this is not what I'm about to say is not a condemning statement. When Jesus said to his disciples, ye of little faith, it, that wasn't a condemning. He, he, was, he was actually giving them a fact so they could move into something different. If our heart is troubled, if we're afraid, if we're anxious, then we have to consider, am I doing the intentional thinking on the higher thoughts or am I not? What's influencing me right now? You have the power. Say, I have the power to choose whether I am troubled or I'll say this, stay troubled. Because all of us can get troubled. I mean, if you listen to the news at night, you can go to bed very troubled. The stuff that's going on in our culture and the choices that some government officials are making and the hell and the devastating results of what they're doing and the lack of humility, and it just goes on and on, and, 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 and seeing drag queens at children's birthday parties. I mean, there's one perversion after another perversion that's taking place in our culture. You watch that for very long, and it doesn't take you long to get troubled and say, oh my God, my God. Help me, Jesus. That's actually the right way to go. But I'm just saying all that because you can get troubled very quickly. If you want to know the scripture, Isaiah 55, 8, 9, I'm not going to read it again, but this is where God says, my thoughts and my ways are higher than yours. You can show it to them, but we're going to go by it. Now, in closing, there's many things that I could probably address, but I don't have the time to do it concerning the different things that could trouble your heart. For parents, something with kids, when they're little it's sickness, or are they going to get hurt when there's a teenager? It's like, are they going to make life-producing choices? When they get older, there's just always something with kids. So as a parent, there's can, many different things could trouble your heart. That's just in the parent category. If you're married, say no more. If you're married and have kids, say double no more. You can be troubled before you even leave the house. Never mind get in your car and it has a flat tire, no gas, something's broken, get to work. There's always something that's looking to trouble your heart. The Lord wants to fortify you and equip you to stand up and say no. You cannot have my heart. 
God is with me. He's for me. All things will work together for my good. He's perfecting everything that concerns me. He hears my prayers. He is with me. Boom, shakala, bang, boom. If you don't know what that means, or you want an interpretation, see Lisa and the prayer team. They've got all the interpretations you need. One thing I want to hit, because if you don't have your head, like we can, because we can just be so easily overwhelmed by our personal life. Never mind finances and any, anybody that has money invested. That's just a whole nother category. But the Lord wants to make us strong in Him so we don't have to be an ostrich and put our head in the sand and avoid things. That's not a life of victory. That's not a life that Jesus has for us. He said, I overcame the world. You can overcome the world through me as you put your faith in me. That's where we're headed. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to grow to be. We don't need to tolerate a troubled heart. We need to do something about it. So I just want to give you a couple scriptures and then we're going to close. Psalm 37 says, Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord. I know. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I, I, I feel so good. <clears throat> It's kind of, don't let it trouble your heart. That's, that's a listening man. Give him a hand right now. Boom, shakala. A plus for that student. Give him a gold star. Kind of like the typo on the praise and worship. It's like, oh, God, help me, Jesus. I thought it was a Hebrew word up there this morning when it said, U-P-O-U. I'm thinking, what's, the, what's that word? That, so I'm right there with, with that person that did that. You know, we're just on the same page. We all need your prayers. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Trust in the Lord. Say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You know, when we stop trusting him, we start acting like the devil. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land. Oh, this is just so good, but I just can't. Just soak in this stuff safely in the land and prosper take delight in the lord means be soft-hearted the word delight means soft-hearted be soft-hearted be tender-hearted he will give you the desires of a heart matter of fact if you're soft-hearted it's like soft soil he puts the seeds of desires that are his desires and you and his desires become your desires then he gives you your desires because your desires are his desires i said that pretty fast i hope you got that commit everything you do to the lord trust him and he will help you I want to give you a couple more things about evil people. Oh, here it goes. Don't worry about evil, if you can catch up with me. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Or fret about their wicked schemes. You watch enough of, of the news and stuff like that. And, and then it's even worse because you can go to China and you can go to Russia and all that stuff. It says, don't fret. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. And that's the heartbeat of what the Lord wants you to know. Here's the bottom line summary for today. When you're lacking peace or losing peace, always know that our Father is the God of peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he has higher thoughts for you to think that will produce peace that passes understanding. They say, passes understanding. In other words, it doesn't make sense that Willie is driving down the tr road whistling Dixie or whistling Jesus. How's that better? It doesn't make sense that you're in the middle of, of cancer therapy and you have peace. You're a rock and you're actually, your whole countenance is ministering to the people that are medically attending to you. That's the kind of peace that we can have. Roaring like a lion, peace. I will not be afraid. I will not be troubled. God is for me. Who can be against me? God wants 
you'd ask the Holy Spirit to put every scripture inside of you that will fortify you and cause you to be able to have intentional thinking in the midst of being troubled, to get out of trouble, to be a rock of peace. He says, if we seek him with all our heart, he will give us the higher thoughts. Father, I pray for myself especially, Father, but for everyone with me and everyone that's listening and is going to be listening, that we would recognize that you are the God of peace, you are the Prince of Peace, Jesus, and that peace is available 24-7 and we don't have to tolerate a troubled heart that we can do something about it. Your word says in 1 Peter 3, 12, that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and your ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do, do evil. Father, help us walk in the faith, the humility, when our heart is troubled and ask you for the higher thoughts, the intentional thinking on the higher thoughts that will produce a peace. Father, I pray for every heart. Matter of fact, I just want to encourage you when I close and we close this whole service today, the prayer team is going to be up here and, and um, I feel an unction based on what I'm saying, the message that anybody that is lacking peace, that, that is um, having a challenge with peace, that there's always encouragement. You're never going to get condemnation. You're going to get prayer, but you're also going to have an assignment. And that is, Holy Spirit, give me the higher thoughts that I need so I can be a person at peace at all times, whether someone cuts me off on the road, whether someone mistreats me, whether all the circumstances are good or bad. I, I just want to be a pillar of peace by thinking on your higher thoughts. So that's everybody's assignment, but there's a graciousness that you're not alone, as Lisa said. This is a family, not a family that condemns or criticizes or tears down, but a family that builds up and supports. That's what we're here for. So don't feel you have to even do the assignment yourself. Call someone up and say, you know, come to prayer. Call someone up. You're, you're only alone if you decide to be alone. Did you hear what I just said? And if you take that bait and decide to be alone, then you're set up to be in isolation and killed by the enemy. So don't go there. People are for you. And if you ever have an experience in this congregation where you think someone's not for you, you come and see me and we'll get it straightened out. Because I believe everybody's here for you. But if I slip or anybody else slips, we'll get it straightened out. So Father, I pray my prayer over this whole congregation before the prayer team prays for anybody. I pray a, a fresh grace as Apostle Paul prayed. I pray a fresh grace upon every heart, Father. If there's troubled hearts, that they would come out of trouble into peace. And then they would practice intentionally thinking for the purpose of peace, your higher thoughts, Father. I ask that you give everybody the individual revelation right from Scripture and then paraphrase like things you've given me, Father. That we can be the pillars of peace and pillars of power that this culture needs. Especially in this day and hour, Father, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm sure Lisa's willing to give you scripture. If you have a scripture you want to fortify them with real quickly, but I feel like your position is in prayer. And I'm going to encourage the leaders to be positioned to encourage everybody, launch them for the week. This is our time of worshiping God, honoring God with giving. And I was talking about it with my husband this morning, and I said, you know, when people go out for a meal, lots of times they will evaluate their giving to a waitress, to a restaurant, by their meal. In the kingdom of God, though, it's a little bit different. It is a decision that we honor the Lord and we put him first. And we've shared that with you. We've shared that if you had 10 $100 bills in front of you, God says, I'm allowing you to steward all of this. And I pray that you take the first 
$100 bill and you give it back to me so I can multiply it for your life. That's God's heart for us. He loves us so much. He wants to keep multiplying what we do, keep multiplying and growing us. So as we worship him in giving, Lisa, do you want to pray over them? I want you to remember that we don't base our giving on, gee, that was a really good message. I'm going to give more today. Yeah. We base it on honoring the Lord, that intentional integrity meter. Amen. So we always put faith to everything we do. So however you pay, you could hold your checkbooks, your phones, whatever, but we're going to pray over this offering. So Father, we thank you, Lord, that we give you our all, everything, O Lord. These are our first fruits, Lord, that we place at the altar, knowing that you will provide our every need, knowing that whatever comes our way, you already know before we even know, and you have made a way where there was no way, because that's where our faith is, O Lord Jesus. So, Father, we just honor you and bless you and praise you with our givings today. We thank you for the multiplication of it. We thank you that it's going to touch thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And we believe that it will, O oh Lord Jesus. We thank you, we praise you, and honor you. Amen and amen. Amen. And what she was praying is very accurate because we knew years ago that the mission that we work with in India gets it to all the pastors. And we recently, uh, when we had uh, Timothy Kakuza from Africa come, his son texted pastor and said could I take these messages and give them out to the people in the villages and I said absolutely so it literally is going around the world which is awesome and that's, it's just bigger that's what I got in my spirit is I know you don't think what is this going to do it really is touching and that's only God could do that so you just give God what you have and he'll do the the multiplying amen 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 so a couple of things real quickly. You saw a, sure, come on over. So Veronica's on a mission. Can you tell? This is Veronica. She's going to share what the teens in junior high are doing today. Yes. So hey, everybody. I'm Veronica, if you don't know me. Um, I've been here for many years from the old church till now. Um, so the kids and I, we have a youth ministry program now. Um, that we weren't able to bless them with before. So we're finally able to do that. And I'm excited because they are able to do laser tag for Halloween. So we, um, the cost is gonna be a little pricey. So we wanna be able to bless the kids and be able to do something to, you know, be able to raise money and be able to accommodate that, that we have to spend that much, which is great. We wanna do that for them. So on Halloween, if you don't know, we usually do a Hallelujah night. So for the kids that are from middle school to high school, we're gonna have them come from 6.30 to 8.30. So if you wanna arrive a little bit early, um, I would say 6.15, um, we're gonna have them setting up this huge, it's like the, the funnest thing ever. Um, they set up these huge bunkers, they're able to shoot each other all night long, it's a really fun game, they don't, there's no physical contact, um, and it's in the gym. So if you have children from that age range, please, please come by. Um, so all of the kids that are um, here today are outside. Sorry, I'm out of breath, and I was sick, so I'm getting over a cold. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, they are all out there, and they worked really hard. Um, we also had some people that had also spent some time baking, so we want to thank them. Um, but they're out there ready to go and to sell whatever you guys want to buy today. So, Amen. And um, wait, there was one more thing. Um, yeah, just 615 arrival, I would say. Amen for that. So I love their energy. Can you tell she has a lot of energy? I'm going. <laughs> and so that's important for our teens and junior high. And they're doing a great job. We want to train the kids that we just don't hand things over to them, mm -hmm. um, that there's um, an incentive, and we want them to rise up in their passion. So they did baking. We also have some um, Live Inspired sweatshirts, size medium and large is what I have available right now. For $25, they're $55 sweatshirts, so if anybody wants one of those. So their goal today is they're raising $250 toward the event. And as she said, we want to have something for them that um, is special for them. Uh, because as I shared earlier, it's not about 
Halloween. It's about All Saints Day and them knowing the difference and them having a safe place to come where they can know the truth and be with a community of believers. Amen. 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 So they're in the foyer. <laughs> team leader meeting in about 15 minutes after things get going in the foyer. Prayer team is available up front. And uh, that's what I got, Pastor. Wrap it, up. Wrap it up. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Go out there. Can I tell you, I think I'm going to race you for those goodies out there. There were some amazing things out there. Oh. oh, that's why he wanted me to pray, so he could hit the foyer first. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and be your family. We thank you for this time. Bless us, launch us, help us this week. We thank you that we've been refueled to go and give it out to everyone we come in contact with. Holy Spirit, lead us in every conversation and every destiny you have for us this week. And Lord, help us to be not Christians in name only, but bringing your presence everywhere we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. We'll see you next week.